Live from Waterford and Dungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead Her In today's top stories, new COVID-19 restrictions will come into effect in the coming days. Gardaí say they're not currently treating as suspicious the discovery of a woman's body in Waterford, while in sport, FIFA has issued a complaint of criminal mismanagement against its former president, Sepp Blatter. Cabinet has approved new COVID-19 restrictions to take effect from Christmas Eve. While Christmas isn't being cancelled, activity will be severely limited once again, as our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports. From 3pm on Christmas Eve, restaurants and pubs that serve food will have to close. Hairdressers, barbers, beauticians, cinemas and galleries will also have to shut on the 24th. From midnight on the 26th, inter-county travel will be restricted, with exemptions for getting home after the Christmas break. Hotels are also expected to be closed after St. Stephen's Day for non-essential stays. From the 27th of December, people will only be allowed to have visitors from one other household in their home. Christmas Day Mass is also likely to be the last one of the year as worship will move online. The travel ban from the UK has also been extended until the end of the year. Cabinet was warned the number of new cases today will be over 900, the highest number since Halloween. The new measures will be reviewed on January 12th. Taoiseach Micheál Martin is expected to formally make the announcement in the next hour. Sean Defoe, Leinster House. Churches are set to close after Christmas Day with worship moving online. Weddings will be allowed to have 25 attendees until midnight on January 1st and reduced to six from the 2nd. In some positive news, it was confirmed to ministers that 40,000 doses of the vaccine will arrive every week in January. Speaking ahead of this morning's Cabinet meeting, Health Minister Stephen Donnelly said Neffet is deeply concerned about the current state of the virus. The spread of the virus is ahead of even some of the more pessimistic Neffet projections. We don't know yet, uh, but there is a concern that it might in part be because of this UK variant. I was speaking with my counterpart in the UK yesterday. They have preliminary data that suggest that the transmission... We're just going to interrupt him to bring the teacher ...managing alive. the spread of this disease. I have put it very plainly. We work to suppress the virus when it is growing, and we work to reopen as much of society and economy as possible when it is safe to do so. We will act quickly and decisively in response to every new development. The one thing which remains absolutely consistent about this virus is that it is potentially deadly, and if it is left to spread unchecked, it will reach the most vulnerable, and they will pay a heavy price. A fortnight ago, after six weeks of very difficult restrictions, people were given the chance to prepare for Christmas and spend time together. The hospitality trade was reopened in a limited way, and intercounty travel was permitted. It was important for people's mental health and well-being that there was some respite from the restrictions that had been in place. It is also important that people have the chance to celebrate the Christmas period with their loved ones. Unfortunately, in the last week, we have seen extraordinary growth in the spread of the virus. This is the same pattern that we have seen in the United Kingdom and across Europe. Just this morning, figures suggest that we may now be seeing a daily growth rate of approximately 10%. This is very obviously a source of serious concern, and it is simply not sustainable. While we do not yet have firm evidence that the new, more virulent strain of the COVID virus is in our country, the rate of growth over the last week tells me that the safest and most responsible thing to do is to proceed on the assumption that it is already here. Every time I have spoken to you, I have made it clear that I believe my first and most important responsibility as Taoiseach and our first and most important responsibility as a government is to protect public health and well-being. We will do whatever it takes to get through this pandemic safely. For that reason, the government has agreed this morning to move quickly and meet the renewed threat aggressively and head-on. But before I explain to you what new restrictions will be introduced in the coming days, I want to say something which I feel is very important. A lot of people will be receiving today's news with a heavy heart. I know that I bring it to you with one. But each and every one of us need to remember that while it may not feel like it, what we have done to date and what we are doing now is saving lives. Because of the sacrifices that so many are making, 
because of the restrictions that we are accepting in our lives, many, many people are alive today who would otherwise not be. As a country and as a community of people working together, we have managed to sustain one of the lowest rates of COVID mortality in all of Europe. And we want to keep it that way. And that's why from Christmas Eve until the 12th of January 2021, the government has agreed to return to level five of the plan for living with COVID with a number of specific adjustments. Non-essential retail may remain open. However, the retail sector will be requested to defer January sales events. Gyms, leisure centres and swimming pools may remain open for individual training only. Hotels may only open for essential non-social and non-tourist purposes, except for guests who already have a booking and are due to check in up to and including St. Stephen's Day. Schools, early learning and childcare services will remain open. Higher, further and adult education should remain primarily online. Non-contact non training in pods of up to 15 may take place outdoors. No matches events should take place except for professional and elite sports and horse racing and greyhound racing behind closed doors. The following transitional arrangements will also apply in respect of the Christmas period. Restaurants and pubs operating as restaurants will close from 3 p.m. on the 24th of December. Hotels may provide food and bar services to guests only after that point. With regard to social and family gatherings, the current provisions, that is, visits from up to two other households, will remain in place up to and including the 26th of December. Visits to private homes, gardens will be allowed from one other household up to and including the 31st of December. In both cases, for those who are part of a support bubble, the bubble counts as one household. From the 1st of January onwards, no visitors are permitted in private homes, gardens, except for essential family reasons, such as providing care to children, elderly or vulnerable people, or as part of a support bubble. Travel outside your county will continue to be permitted up to and including the 26th of December inclusive. People away from their place of residence after that period will be permitted to return to their place of residence. Christmas religious services may take place, however religious services will return online after the 25th of December when places of worship may remain open for private prayer. I know that these restrictions will pose huge challenges for some sectors of the economy, but I want to reassure them that extra financial supports will be provided. Yesterday we marked the winter solstice and in three days we will celebrate Christmas. In any year this is a week of light and hope, but those twin themes have never felt more important, more vital than they do this year. And as despondent as any of us might feel with the return of restrictions, it is important to remember that the hope is real. There is light at the end of this tunnel. Vaccines are on the way. Last night I received confirmation that we will shortly receive delivery of almost 10,000 vaccines against this disease. The rollout of these will commence next week to our most vulnerable and we will safely and swiftly build from there. We first placed orders for vaccines back in July and we are mobilizing an unprecedented national effort. Vaccinating millions of people will take time and in the meantime we have to be very vigilant. We cannot go any faster than we are allowed by the available supply of the vaccines and the dosing schedules required for them to be effective. But I am certain that our vaccination program will bring us greater freedom in how we manage the virus in the new year. The real strength of any nation is its people. Everywhere we've looked over the last nine months, we have seen the strength of the Irish nation in the selfless dedication of our healthcare workers and the professionalism of our teachers and school staff. We have seen it in the quiet army of cleaning staff and caretakers who have kept so many facilities accessible and safe. 
and in the shop workers who have kept essential retail open without complaint throughout the entire pandemic. We have seen it in the resilience of our small business owners and the hospitality trade who have faced so many challenges and have shown the strength to keep going. And we have seen it in our children's endless ability to adapt. To all of these people and to all the others who have followed the public health advice and did what was asked of them, I say thank you. Time fear vrichti of galer, what a dern on shanachel is their sco a chele a varan nadini. Kahmid lanunt a gober, le chele, con kosk a chur eran virus sho. But this time kinte, gujukamid slon, tagan on green a goni in yegna farana. The very idea of Christmas is about showing our love and respect for others. And that is why in normal times we put so much effort into spending time with family and friends. It's why we try to put away our everyday concerns and focus on the things we value the most. This year, the way for us to show our love and respect for others is to act responsibly, to comply with the guidelines and to limit the spread of this virus. This Christmas is going to be different, but it is also going to be very special. We've lost many friends and neighbours to this disease, and many others didn't get the goodbye they deserved because of the restrictions that the disease required. We remember all of them, and together we look forward to brighter days. I want to wish everyone a peaceful Christmas and a happier, hopeful new year. Nolig huinach hone diev galer, agus garev mina mahagav. Taoiseach Michal Martin speaking outside government buildings this afternoon and as expected announced new restrictions from Christmas Eve until January 12th. The country is returning to level five with some adjustments. Non-essential retail can stay open. Sales events can't happen though. Gyms and leisure centres remain open for individual training. For hotels may open for essential non-social non-tourist purposes. Schools, early learning and childcare services will remain open and higher, further and college education should remain online. Other news this afternoon, Guardian and Waterford are investigating the southern de- sudden death of a woman in the Mount Shore area of Carrick Fearish in Waterford City. The body was discovered this morning. Early indications are that the death is not suspicious. However, a post-mortem will determine the course of the Garda investigation. A social worker in Waterford who made a protected disclosure about the alleged abuse of a woman with intellectual disabilities in care has launched a high court action aimed at preventing her employers from dismissing her. The complaints by Claire Looney and about the care of the woman who became known as Grace led to the establishment of the Farley Commission. As Julie Smith reports, Claire Looney is trying to prevent her dismissal from her role as Head of Clinical Services with Waterford Intellectual Disabilities Association, which is funded by the HSE. According to the Irish Times, the High Court heard she was dismissed in November following a two-year suspension after what her lawyers say was an extremely flawed process. She denies any wrongdoing and claims she's been subject to penalisation by the HSC as a result of the disclosures she made. Her solicitor told the High Court what had happened to his client had a chilling effect for anyone making disclosures concerning the care of those with intellectual disabilities. Ms Looney said she made protected disclosures to the Department of Health, the HSE and the Dáil Public Accounts Committee about the care of Grace and others in the same placement in 2009. The Farley Commission began work in May 2017 to investigate the claims of the alleged physical and sexual abuse of Grace and the others. The case has been adjourned until January. A Waterford haulier believes the situation in Dover will get worse. Irish drivers are among those stuck in Kent where close to a thousand trucks are parked up. The border between the UK and France is currently closed due to concerns over Covid. Paul Jackman spoke to Damien Tiernan on Daisha Today. They have an independent heater in the truck to keep warm. That's running on diesel. The diesel in Europe is the, is the dearest in the UK so, so drivers would be leaving the UK with, with little diesel. So you're going to have fridges running out down in Dover with perishable goods on it. You're going to have uh, trucks running out of diesel. This is yet to manifest itself depending on how long this goes on. So the chaos is will only uh, grow as time passes. 
Make the smart play with Virgin Media. Check out their smart home packages at Virgin Media, George's Street, Waterford. Sponsors of the Sports News on WLR. Starting with soccer, where FIFA issued a complaint of criminal mismanagement against its former president, Sepp Blatter. Today, it's been lodged with the Zurich prosecutor and relates to the involvement of former officials at the FIFA Museum Project in the same city. Blatter resigned from the presidency in 2015, following a corruption scandal at the governing body. Republic of Ireland midfielder Robbie Brady will miss Burnley's Christmas per- busy Christmas period. The Dublin native tweaked his hamstring in their 2-1 Premier League win over Wolves last night. Manager Sean Dyche says they're waiting on the results of a scan. Tonight, Arsenal hosts Manchester City in the Carabao Cup quarter final. Under pressure, Gunners boss Mikel Arteta will be reunited with City manager Pep Guardiola, who will be used to, who he used to deputise for. The host will be without Pierre Emerick Aubameyang as he continues to recover from a calf injury. Kickoff at the Emirates is at eight. Before that, Brentford entertain Newcastle from half past five. The bees are enjoying a great warm run of form and are unbeaten in thirty games in all competitions. While in rugby, Pete Romani is following the return to play protocols. After a head injury in Munster's Heineken Champions Cup win over Claremont at the weekend, the Cork native is hoping to feature in their St. Stephen's Day Pro 14 clash with Leinster. In a boost to the province, Alex McHenry and Ireland prop Dave Kilcoyne are set to return to training this week. Johan van Gran will name his side to face Leinster on Thursday. Sports news on WLOR is thanks to Virgin Media Waterford. W- WLOR asks you to remember every contact counts so stay safe and have a happy Christmas.